to the vlog. Um, it is Wednesday morning. I just got up and got ready. Look at the dog still in bed. Sleeping like a baby. That's Vern. He's our, our, our firstborn baby. Yeah. Anyways, sorry. I'm obsessed with him. Obviously, he has helped me tremendously through my... Um, grief with losing Calvin and just the stress of infertility and IVF and all that so he's my little baby so it is as I said it is Wednesday I'm just rambling on um Corey and I are Corey's at work but he should be home shortly it is um almost 8 30 and we are going to head to Costco we literally um have no groceries and we just got a costco membership recently now that i work part-time and i have wednesdays off i don't know if it's like this where you guys live but costco is like a zoo like it's crazy sometimes you can't find parking here um you can't like get up and down the aisles like people are like pushing you out of the way it's like crazy so we're gonna give it a go and see how it works um we knew we were going so we hadn't gone to our regular grocery store and our fridge is not looking too good. Yeah, that's our fridge. We have our condiments. <laughs> we have a little bit of a bottle of wine, some chicken broth, pickles, hot peppers, and a couple of spaghetti squash, a couple of carrots, and a couple of um, green uh, peppers and one, one apple. <laughs> So it's pretty hard up, so we definitely need to get some groceries. So that is what we are gonna do today. So yeah, Costco visit is definitely needed. I'm dreading going outside. It, But it is like minus 20 something out there. So it is gonna be absolutely freezing, but welcome to Nova Scotia, Canada in the winter. <laughs> Anyway, so I do have a little bit of um, an update for my IVF. Um, we have made a decision that we are going to go ahead and do it this month. Uh, so what that means is I called the clinic on Monday and they called me back yesterday. So today is February 27th and what that means is on March 7th, I am to start my uh, super fact which is actually going to be different this time around last time around I did the Lupron injection and that is what I used I did the injection once and that um, shut down all my natural hormones so it shuts down your uh, brain so your pituitary grand, gland sorry from making uh, your natural monthly hormones because they don't want you to do that because they don't want you to ovulate before they're ready um, to retrieve your eggs. So basically that's what I, that is. And this time around, I'm going to do the more common way to do that, which is um, a nasal spray. So I will have to do a nasal spray. I think it's one spray per nostril five times a day. So that will be new, uh, but I don't foresee it being an issue. I think that's what really what most people do. I had just done the Lupron because I had already been on that injection for four months, so it just made sense to do one more injection. Um, but that is not what we're gonna do this time. This time we are going to do the nasal spray. So I start that on March 7th, and then on March 21st, I go to the clinic to do my down regulation check. So that is just a uh, blood work and ultrasound uh, to tell them um, the blood works to tell them my hormone levels, so my estrogen and my progesterone levels to make sure that I am indeed basically down regulated. So I am uh, basically my hormones are turned off and then um, it is an internal ultrasound and they just look at your uterus and your uterine lining and make sure that everything is where it needs to be to start um, your stim injection. So to start your injections, to start giving yourself those hormones. So if I go in on the 21st and everything looks good, which it should, I will then start the injections. I believe it's the next night on the 22nd, or maybe it's that night on the 21st. I'll have to check my notes, but 
regardless, I'll be starting my injections on the 21st or 22nd of March, and then I will um, do those for five days and then go back in and check to see how my follicles are going, how many follicles I am growing and stuff like that. And then I suspect I'll go in frequently for blood work and internal ultrasounds. Uh, much the fifth day and then every second day until I get close and then once I get close to being where they think I'm going to need to be to do my egg retrieval then I will start going in every day and then eventually they'll say you're ready do your trigger shot and then again like last time exactly 36 hours after I do my trigger shot I go in for my surgery and I get um, my eggs retrieved Corey gives a sample they go ahead and um fertilize hopefully and then you know we wait and same as last time basically so that is where we're at um yeah so really right now i'm not really nervous i'm just excited i hope we have better results this time um i hope that uh, my main hope for this round is that we get more eggs and then hopefully more fertilize, and then in the end, we end up with more embryos. I would really like to have a good solid number of embryos this time uh, to freeze. Um, the more the better. I can't really give a number, um, but ideally, honestly, I'd like to be able to freeze six if I can. Um, but if in a perfect world, I'd have like nine that I could freeze just to have. I don't want to have to go through this whole process again. Um, I don't, if I have to, if I have ones that are frozen and I transfer, do a fresh transfer and that doesn't work, I won't be that upset if I have more frozen ones to use. So we'll see. That's my hope for this time. So we'll see how it goes. And yeah. All right, guys. Hey guys, we just got home from Costco. That was the first time going um, we just got a new membership since I work part-time now, and look how much stuff we got. So, we got all of our veggies, tons and tons of veggies, some trail mix, I like to take trail mix on the boat with them. Cereal, yogurt, milk, more veggies, some pre mixed salads, frozen veggies. Uh, we usually buy mostly fresh, broccoli, uh, more greens, avocados, peppers, frozen strawberries, I use those for smoothies. We got some dips for the veggies, um, cheese, this is granola, eggs, tons of meat. Uh, this is uh, ground turkey, got some pork tenderloin, some chicken wings, a bunch of bacon, some sandwich turkey meat, um, some edamame, I love edamame, I snack on it at night. Hamburger, chicken thighs, chicken breast underneath here. Um, some dog bones, just kind of everything basically. We spent a fortune, but hopefully we won't need to get groceries for a while. Um, some bread, or we got some chocolate bars for the boat. I got some, just some cleaning products and stuff. Uh, I got prenatals, so I've been taking prenatals now for four years and I always just buy the little ones at the drugstore and they're a fortune. So I got this big massive bottle <laughs> um, for cheaper, hopefully. So hopefully those are okay. I don't, my stomach doesn't agree with all prenatals, so hopefully this Costco brand will be all right. And then I also bought these uh, vitamins, the coenzyme Q10, I think is what it's called. Anyways, I've read a lot about these improving your egg quality um, for IVF, so uh, I, went, I saw them, I went ahead and bought them. If anybody knows anything more about these or has any insight on these vitamins, CoQ10, vitamins um let me know because i just see it everywhere posted on youtube posted on the ivf facebook group i'm on so i think i'm theoretically should have started taking them a while ago like i think you're supposed to start taking them like three months before you start your cycle but hey better late than never i think i just kind of learned about them so yeah so i have to kind of break up a lot of this freezer meat because we usually eat meals for two and uh, put it in bags and stuff and then get it in the freezer and yeah, that's kind of what we're up to today. Corey's gonna go to work. Burns having a little snooze. 
All right, guys. Chat later. All right, guys. It's just a little bit later on Wednesday. I um, finally got all those groceries sorted out. You have to kind of, I have to take the meat. There's only two of us, so I have to take the meat and uh, baggie them up more separated so that we kind of have enough of what we need just for one meal because we never eat like all that much at once because it's just the two of us so I bagged that up and then I took the dog on a big long walk um which was uh it was good I love getting outside it's so good for my mental health but it is actually freezing out today it's like minus 20 something with the wind chill like I said so it was it was cold. I was bundled up, so that helped. But uh, yeah, we went on a nice long walk. I've been trying to, I've always walked a lot because of the dog. I've been trying to walk a lot more because I did, um, when I did my first round of IVF, I did gain 17 pounds, which is just outrageous. But that's what it ended up being for me. I did think that um, a big portion of that had to do with when you grow all those follicles, your ovaries get massive. And I think a lot of the medication make you gain weight. So I thought when I went off the medication and then when I got my period after, um, after the IVF didn't work, I thought all that weight would drop off because, um, I've heard that that's what happens, but unfortunately that did not happen for me. So I'm actually, um, 17 pounds heavier than I was when I started IVF. So I am trying to exercise and eat really healthy because I would like to get that weight back down before I set, start my second round in case I gain the same amount my second round. I don't want to be like almost 40 pounds heavier than I was, um, because I didn't lose that initial weight. So I'm trying to get that down in the next three weeks. Um, I don't know how well that will work. Uh, it's really hard. Um, I typically don't have a problem keeping my weight where I want it. That being said, it's hard when you're doing IVF because when you do IVF, once you start the injections especially, you really cannot do any um, strenuous working out. And I do boot camp type workouts when I work out. So um, I can't do those. That's what I would typically do and I can't do those and the reasoning is because your ovaries get so big that if you work out they can actually like I think it's they like can twist or something anyways you just because your ovaries are so big um, they tell you not to do any strenuous working out and then that goes even after you do your retrieval and your transfer they still don't want you doing any strenuous works workouts so um, it's it's a little bit trickier for me to keep my weight where I want it so I'm just gonna eat really healthy and do a lot of walking and I'm gonna do a little bit of working out uh, in the next couple weeks <laughs> that I can before I start well I'll have three weeks or so before I start my injection so I will try um but anyway so I went for a nice long walk and then I just got home I'm just gonna fold some laundry and then probably start supper and then hopefully spend some time with Corey and so that'll probably be it for today and maybe even this vlog I'm not sure if I'll get back on here this week uh, I don't really do much vlogging <laughs> during the week usually because I'm usually at work. So I'm pretty much at work all day and then I come home and we're doing supper and walking the dog and you know, there's not much going on during the week so I don't vlog much. So I just thought I'd do it today because I have um, Wednesdays off. Um, so that's good. I will say I wanted to mention that I actually feel like this time around my headspace is in a lot better of a place than it was last time so last time i had as you guys know a lot going on i was doing that ivf treatment right in the same month that was my one year after um giving birth and having kelvin and, and losing him so i just felt like there was a lot on my plate i spent the majority of the last year um feeling quite depressed and 
Um, my anxiety was really uncontrollable. And so uh, I don't know what it is exactly, but for some reason after hitting that year mark and then also being done my first IVF cycle, obviously I was so disappointed that it didn't work. And as you guys saw, I was so disappointed that I only had the one embryo. That was a huge hit for me. Um, but I do, since we have found out that we are not pregnant, like I was definitely devastated for a couple days, but I feel like I've really taken a turn for the better since then. And I don't know what it is. I think it's a combination of, um, like I said, getting through that first year without Calvin. Um, I think, I took a part-time job, which I think plays a huge part in it. I do miss my old job. I loved my old job more than I like my new job, but my new job um, gives me a little bit of time for myself and it's closer to home. So I save at least two hours a day that I was spending in my car. I don't anymore. So um, that, and I just think spending more time with Corey is helpful. And I think that since I'm doing this IVF and I can focus solely on that and I'm not, um, as wrapped up in my grief with Kelvin, I, I feel a lot better this time around. So hopefully that's good. I'm hoping that my stress levels and anxiety won't be as bad this time. That being said, I don't think, even though I wasn't in the best headspace last time, I don't think that had anything to do with um, my IVF not working. Um, I just think, you know, sometimes scientifically, I just think it wasn't a match last time. So that's where we're at. I do think hopefully this time we've learned from the first cycle and hopefully this time we will be have better results, um, but we won't know that until we do it. So I am feeling a lot better. I'm trying to reconnect with some of my friends, spend time with them, do things that make me happy, and that's, that seems to be helping. So um, I'm glad for that. And I think a lot of that has to do with, like I said, um, just making it past that first year uh, with Oak Kelvin and also just having more time to focus on myself instead of being at work and in my car all the time. So I'm feeling a lot better about that. I did when I was at Costco. Um, actually, I ran into uh, another lost mom that I actually messaged quite a bit and she's helped me tremendously through my lost journey, like more than she'll probably ever know. She's like answered all of my messages no matter what time of day. She's gotten me out of deep holes of depression she probably doesn't even realize how much of a difference she made but i ran into her at costco and i've actually even though we've messaged each other and we know so much about each other and stuff i've actually never met her in person so i ran into her at costco and i was so happy to finally actually meet her in person it just put me in a good mood i don't know it's so weird like she's probably watching this being like what the hell but anyways it was it just put me in a good mood i was so happy to meet her like she's so um, nice and she's been so kind to me and she's really helped me so it was nice to actually uh, meet her and give her a hug so anyways I'm feeling a lot better uh, this this time around I've had a great last two or three weeks so I think that's amazing so hopefully uh, hopefully things go well I can't wait to um, continue this journey I can't wait to start my next cycle um, so yeah, the countdown is on. <laughs> March 7th is when I start my first medication. And also if anybody on here, um, any of my kind of fellow IVF people on here have taken those vitamins for your eggs, the QO or COQ10 uh, vitamins, there's, like I said, supposed to help with egg quality. If any of you guys have taken that and had, um, have any feedback on that or anything I would love to hear because I've just like read a lot about it on different Facebook groups and stuff. I don't really know a whole lot about it. I probably should ask my doctor, but I probably won't be meeting her for a while. So um, if anybody has any input about that, that would be really awesome. I would appreciate that. So you can comment below. All right, guys. Well, I'll maybe talk to you in a bit. Not sure. If not, we'll see you next week.